The purpose of this video is to go over 4.9 antiderivatives. I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the notation the book uses. So they define an antiderivative as a function that you can differentiate and get original function, right, f of x. So they kind of introduce this by using some logic thinking backwards. Is If I take this function x squared, I'm going to get out 2x. So that tells me the antiderivative of the original, or the output function 2x is the original function x squared. So if I take the derivative of sine of x, I get cosine, so that tells me that cosine, the output of it, is the antiderivative of the original function sine of x. Now you don't have to memorize or think about it backwards, you can end up saying that the antiderivative cancels out the derivative. Mm -hmm. One step further is you want a family of antiderivative. So it turns out is if I would have had 2x plus c, the derivative of that, or not, sorry, not 2x plus c, x squared plus c, if I take the derivative of that with respect to x, that's going to be 2x plus 0, because this constant, the derivative of a constant is 0. So if I want to find a family of functions, then any function in this form, x squared plus c, where c is a constant, is going to be a antiderivative, or 2x is going to be the antiderivative of a function in this form, x squared plus c. So you don't have to necessarily memorize it as thinking about it backwards. You can use the power rule for indefin indefinite integrals, and the power rule only works when p is any real number that isn't minus 1. Minus 1 is a special case. When you're integrating 1 over x, then the integral of 1 over x is ln of absolute value of x. So that's a kind of special case when you're dealing with powers. So one thing to keep important here is you need to make sure you know when you're integrating and when you know when you're differentiating. When you're integrating a function, you're going to add 1 to the power and divide by that same power. Note when you take the derivative with respect to x of x to the n, you get n x to the n minus 1. Right? So you have to be very careful to remember how to take the derivative and then remember how to integrate when you're doing each one. Here's some other examples of just other integrals you can think about. The integral of sine is going to be minus cosine because the derivative of cosine is minus sine. These will come with time. And the last thing this section introduces is the position, velocity, and acceleration and the initial value, how that's related. So if you differentiate position, you get velocity. If you integrate velocity, you get position. So these are all going to be related to each other. If I integrate velocity and get position, that plus c is going to play a role in this initial value. And we'll see some examples of that. The same thing with velocity and acceleration. If I integrate acceleration, I get velocity. And if I want to know the initial velocity, I plug in 0 for time, and I solve for that constant c that equals v naught. So let's look at the first example, number 7 in your homework. Is This is a simple power one, and I'm not sure what happened here, but we're going to go through it. The integral of 9x to the 17th minus 5x to the 9th with respect to x. So the integral of a constant plus a function is going to be, that constant is going to be able to pull out. So I pull out the 9, and then I integrate x to the 17 plus 1 over 17 plus 1. That's the form for the power rule with integrals. 
minus 5x to the 9 plus 1 over 9 plus 1. And then I have that plus c for the family of antiderivatives. So simplifying, I have 9 over 18x to the 18th minus 5 over 10x to the 10th plus c. So this would be my answer, and I could clean it up by putting one half there. But I want to make sure that I can get back to this original function by differentiating. So if I take the derivative with respect to x, what do I have? 9 over 18 times 18x to the 17 minus 5 over 10 times 10x to the 9th plus the derivative of a constant is 0. So I would end up with... 9x to the 17 minus 5x to the 9th, which is exactly what I started with. So when you're integrating, you add to the exponent and you divide by that same number. And when you're finding the derivative, you drop the power down and subtract 1 from the exponent. Let's look at another example here. And on this example, this is number 10, you might find it beneficial to write the powers in the numerator. So this would be 8x to the minus 8 plus 5. Really this is x to the 0, which is 1, but you don't have to write that. Minus 6 over, oops, sorry, I want to write it. 6x to the minus 2 dx. So the same thing here, if I want to integrate this, this term would be 8 x to the minus 8 plus 1 over minus 8 plus 1. Got to be a little careful with the negatives that we get that going right. Plus, the integral of a constant is just going to be the constant times x or whatever you're integrating with respect to. Minus 6x to the minus 2 plus 1 divided by minus 2 plus 1 plus the c. So what would I have here? I would have 8 over minus 8 plus 1, which is a minus 7. x to the minus 7 plus 5x. Here I have to be a little careful. Minus 2 plus 1 is a minus 1. Minus 6 divided by a minus 1, which would be a positive 6. x to the minus 1 plus c. Again, you should be able to check yourself by differentiating it. If I differentiate this function with respect to x, I would have 8 over minus 7 times minus 7x to the minus 7 minus 1 plus 5, so the derivative of 5x is 5, plus 6 times a minus 1x to the minus 2. And you can see how the minus 7 is going to cancel. And I'm left with 8x to the minus 8 plus 5 minus 6x to the minus 2, which is what I started with. So just to kind of recap on the integral, it would be, I drop the constant, x to the power plus 1 divided by the power plus 1. This example is a little more tricky, however, if you use algebra and rewrite this as the integral of 5x to the 8 over x to the 4th plus 4x to the 5th divided by x to the 4th dx. So this allows me to simplify this to the integral of 5x to the 4th plus 4x dx. So if I distribute the two terms there, this would be just a common denominator. So I could add the numerators together, but I could also separate them like this. And so the integral here is going to be 5x to the fifth over 5 plus 4x squared over 2 plus c. So that would give me x to the fifth plus 1 half. Oop. 
2, not 1 half, 2 x squared plus c. And if I differentiate that, I end up with 5x to the 4th plus 4x. So it might look more complicated at first, but just knowing how to deal with it. So here, if I have a plus b over c, I can write that as a over c plus b over c. And then I can integrate term by term. Number 12 is knowing the integral of the trig functions. And again, you don't have to memorize them. You can always think of it backwards, right? So this would be the integral of 7 secant of x times tangent of x minus the integral of 2. Oops. Anytime I have an integral, I need to pair it with a dx. So minus 2 integral of secant squared x dx. So I can think of what, and I can also pull out this 7. What is it when I differentiate, I get secant tangent? So this would be 7 secant of x plus c minus 2. What is it when I differentiate, I get secant squared? So that's tangent of x. And then again, this plus c. This plus c is just a little bit repetitive. What this would be, it would be 7 secant of x minus 2 tangent of x and then the plus c. If I want to check myself, I can differentiate it, the derivative with respect to x. The derivative of secant is secant of x tangent of x minus 2. The derivative of tangent is secant squared of x and then the derivative of constant is 0. So is that what we originally started with? It is, and so we're good to go. You can memorize the integral of secant tangent is secant, but you can also think of it as the derivative of secant is secant tangent. So if I integrate secant tangent, I get out secant. And if you write them, like the derivative with respect to x of secant of x equals secant tangent, you can see that if I integrate them, the integral sign cancels out the derivative signs. Oops, I didn't write secant tangent. So if I integrate both sides, the integral sign cancels out the derivative sign and you're left with secant of x. I really you should have that plus c. So the integral of secant tangent is secant. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. And so that's kind of all we have there. Um, if you have any other questions, just let me know, and I'll try to uh, do a quick video or something. But hopefully this kind of helps with the power rule. You might have the initial value problem where after you integrate something, you want to solve for this c. So if this was a position function, and you want to say, usually they use t, but if they say something like s of 0 is 5, that means you need to solve for the value when you plug in x is 0 that the c would be 5. Or they might have something like s of 1 is 5. So if I plug in 1 to this function, I want to set it equal to that c would equal 5. And there might be some varieties of that. And so you'd have a specific antiderivative that satisfies initial condition. Just keep me posted.